Hello, last week I built a large temple, and now it is time to build a simple diorama for it. Anyone can build this terrain from cheap materials that you might already have at home. I began by cutting a large piece of XPS foam for the base of the terrain, and then a smaller one for the higher level where the temple will stand. Right now I have no idea where I can store this, but that's a problem for another day. And hey, if you don't have XPS foam, you can use an expanding foam spray instead. Good, I proceeded by shaping the base with the knife. It is way too thick, so there's much to cut away. The expanding foam is probably much better for this. On the other hand, the upper part will be shaped into a sandstone hill, or something in the lines of that. There's quite a lot to cut away here. I'll try to cut so that the hills and sand dunes are formed in the same process. As you can see, a thinner foam board would be much more convenient here. Okay, I really didn't think this one through. Well, I guess that's the theme of my videos anyway, so on we go. Take this as workout. I'm practicing the art of the blade. I was able to carve away foam between the highest areas of the dunes. By making vertical cuts first, I could remove foam more easily. Look, here I'll place the hill. I'll try to make it fit somehow, and there shall be a sloping sand dune that leads down. Okay, slowly getting there. In this way, I got lots of material away from the middle parts. Someone would probably want all of this foam junk. Perhaps I'll save it for later use. Okay, that should be enough terraforming for now. All of these marked areas will be steep cliff faces that I will texture soon. My main interest here is to create terrain that provides visual cover not only due to walls, trees or rocks. For the scale I use in my games, these height differences are enough to block vision, especially if someone lies prone, lurking behind a hill. Time to make the rock textures. I carved my usual stone textures with the knife, making sure to make cuts in different angles. This foam I use gets the best textures when torn, so I tried to rip off material instead of just cutting it away. Here the cliff side will gradually transition into smooth sand. That is, if my sand texture works. Much in the same way I made textures all around the top piece. This would be lots of fun unless it was for those little foam bits that get stuck in the socks and spread everywhere. Good enough before making any too ambitious moves, I took some time to think. I made a quick test application of the sandy desert texture, just to see how it behaves. Tapping with a brush seems to work well. Now I waited and went to sleep. That looks decent, still some room for improvement. Anyway, next I painted the stone textured areas with this beige or light brown color. I believe this will work well as a desert color. The paint is mixed from white, brown and yellow. Also, I added a bit of water so the paint is easier to spread out. When painting, I sometimes noticed strange looking textures and half loose pieces. I simply tore them into better shape on the go. This color is better than the one I used for the paste, so I'll save the rest for when I make sand textures over the entire terrain. I forgot one thing, but it is not too late. I used the aluminum foil ball to apply textures on flat surfaces. Just gotta be careful not to break the coat of paint. Usually this is done before painting. Next I glued the two pieces together using hot glue. Hmm, it seems that the glue is too hot. Letting the glue cool for a while helped. And also everything will stay in place better when I add the paste. Here we have some large gaps that I filled with smaller foam bits. By adding this filler content, I won't have to use as much of the texture paste. And most importantly, I get more filler content for this video. I repainted some poorly covered areas with a smaller brush. Then I made a wash. 
here we have a cup of water. I added this dark brown, mixed and dried the wash. Ok, that's not too bad. I added a bit of black and also a few drops of detergent to improve my wash. Now I just applied it over all stone textures. It still seemed to be too diluted, so I added more of the dark brown. Of course, I took the messy approach when applying the wash. I let the excess flow off the foam onto my table, and perhaps on the floor as well. Well, that didn't work at all. The wash was too runny and it flowed away. My solution. Now I have much more paint in the wash. I applied the wash again and saw that it's much better. Meanwhile, as the wash dried, I made a few rocks from foam scraps. I painted and washed these in the same way. After everything was dry, I went ahead and applied an even darker wash over most areas. I especially tried to get it into the deepest cracks and crevices. Contrast is everything. The rocky surfaces are now almost done. I like the results very much. This will hardly require any dry brushing, I believe. What I noticed when painting is that the wash flowed away from these near vertical crevices. That's annoying. While the textures that go diagonally or horizontally retained the wash much better. Well, now I know that. Do you see these little flakes? They came off the bottom of the cup. I noticed them while painting and decided to see what happens if I just leave them on. These are rarely occurring minerals that surely improve the quality of this craft. Press like to agree. I also applied bluish wash on some areas to go along with the blue spots. These colors here seem to work quite well together. Preparing for the next step, I made the top part less flat by cutting away some. To make lots of my desert paste, I mixed more paint, then added baking soda and PVA glue. For the purpose of this project, the paste should be slightly runny, so it settles into an almost smooth sand surface. The paste still needs to be firm enough to retain some textures, so I tried it on a small area, applied textures and waited. After 10 minutes, the surface looked good. The paste gets thicker and grainier as it dries, which is good. We're good to go. I applied the rest. I noticed most of the paint is used for covering gaps and holes. I actually applied too much on the flat areas in the beginning, so I covered the rest of the surfaces with less. And here, near the rocky surfaces, I was a bit more careful. About 10 minutes later, I tapped on textures using a large brush. Once fully covered, I put the diorama aside and started making little things. I will prove myself this time. Using somewhat similar techniques as with the temple from the last episode, I made my elven pillars. From this thicker cardboard, I cut out suitable pillar shapes. These could be made from foam, but I also want to show you the use of easily available materials. I made 8 of these in total. This time I added the textures before adding more details. So first a layer of glue, then baking soda. Another reason why I made this is to see how cardboard buildings look like when done with more care. I was a bit too messy back in the last episode when I built the temple. I painted this with a light brown. The paint is slightly thinned with water, so it spreads out nicely. Here I saw that the baking soda only stays fully in place after it's painted. Actually, just forget that. You can just mix soda in your paint to apply the same textures. Sometimes we miss the most obvious things. I used the rest to cover some gaps and air holes I found on the sand dunes. And while that dried, I reapplied textures on the slow drying areas. 
back to the pillars, like at cardstock strips that are slightly wider than the cardboard. I also made these curved pieces that can be placed like this. That's enough aesthetics for our pillars. I base coated them with black before gluing them on. Was a bit tricky with the brush. I focused on getting the most visible sides good. There we go, it took a while to make all of this. I hot glued the cardstock strips on, trying to avoid any overflowing mess. As simple as that, I got a nice and clean fit by making the pieces a bit too long, so they can be trimmed off later. Next, I dry brushed with gold. With little paint on the brush, I took my time to get a clean finish. That looks much better than the gold parts on the temple. A black wash should do some good here, unlike on Netflix. I applied it most heavily near the cardstock details, but not on them. You can also use some paper to remove extra wash from the middle in order to get a more natural look. Here they are, compared to one unwashed pillar. I finished this off with a gentle dry brush of almost white, focusing mostly on the middle to further increase the contrast of dark and light. I also brushed some on the cardstock. Next I glued these pillars onto my simple diorama. Using hot glue is quick, but PVA glue is better if you wanna glue on flocking around the base of the pillars at the same time. I started by placing two pillars at the lower level. Up there they will be placed around the temple. Here it is important to not make a mess. And remember to remove all of those hot glue strings. I placed the pillars a small distance from the temple and the cliff edge while struggling to get epic camera angles. What I like about this is the versatility. Without the temple, the scenery becomes a mysterious sight in the middle of the desert. While the hot glue was still warm, I also glued on the smaller rocks I made earlier. Use every opportunity to cover up shameful spots. I placed the stones where I believe they'll work well as cover and obstacles in combat. And these larger bits work as stairs when glued here. Strange fantasy stairs that most importantly look good. Now this is looking a bit too arid, don't you think? Very well, here I made these moderately impressive grass tufts. I used some hot glue, bits of hemp rope and some diluted paints to make these very easily. The extra wash is removed with a bit of paper. I shall make a video about homemade grass tufts once I know more. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and like so you can see the next one. Thanks. Here be the tufts. I started gluing on the peasant level tufts with modest excitement in my heart. Lately I've been struggling to craft something that I really like. I believe this is the one. I attached them with PVA glue and placed them mainly wherever I could cover bad looking holes and such. Naturally, these would not grow out in the open. That would be too dry for the hemp and tufts, but this is fantasy and I needed to cover some bad spots. I accidentally discovered these when making the roofs for the mud huts. This is how I made them. Cut some fur, dip a finger in glue, then shape the fur into a loose ball. These are not impressive, but they work well for tabletop standard terrain. But accidentally, you might shape them into something beautiful. You can also use fur for grass tuft, but I believe the earlier method is more reliable and results in more durable tufts. I used the fur to improve some of the hemp tufts as well. I placed the last bush and wondered what's next. I saw lots of loose fur that I blew away. Mm. Yes, a lighter dry brush on the stone. I dry brushed with a tan, not worrying about hitting the sand textures, because it's nearly the same color. Oh, the bushes, it's a durability test. 
On goes the temple. Here I proved, mainly to myself, that the cardboard and cardstock techniques can be used to create many great things. Imagine how this could look with more careful work. These pillars are an example of careful work. Now that this became a strange pillar-surrounded site in the Mummy Plague Desert, the temple build can be found in this video. Go check it out if you haven't. I like these bushes and grass tufts. Best of all, they can be improved upon. For more bushes, simple terrain and custom minis, do subscribe, like and feed your inner nerd by watching one of these videos next. Also, thanks to the supporters on Patreon. Consider becoming one if you appreciate these videos a bit too much.